Hey everybody, it's PJ from Wisconsin Air Gunners. We have an awesome box to bench video today. I have in this box right here, let me show you. The latest from Raw Rapid Air Works. This is the Micro Hunter in 177 Cal. We're gonna be putting an Element Optics Helix 2 to 16 on it. I've got a brand new set of UTG Leapers medium rings. We're going to put those up top. We're going to get a scope on it. We're going to get air in it. We're going to put some pellets in it and we're going to see what the accuracy looks like downrange. Give you some ideas about shot count as well as what's that infamous, famous, whatever way you want to go, raw trigger really feel like. Stay tuned. We just got put under a heat advisory. It is absolutely brutally hot and humid outside. Um, okay for short uh, <laughs> short adventures out, but there's some inside stuff to do with every box to bench. So we're gonna do that inside. The first thing I'm gonna do is open this box. I have been excited about this gun since I saw it at SHOT Show. Um, you might've caught my video with Tun Jones talking about this. Uh, particular rifle. Again, it is the Rapid Airworks Raw Micro Hunter. Um, and this one I think is in 177 caliber. All right, doing battle with the tape. Sorry about the noise. Wow. I love the case that this comes in. Um, look how thick it is. In like perfect carrying around, but dimensions that you're actually going to be able to put a scope on and have the rifle inside and maybe even have some accessories in there with you. Hey. They do have this nicely packaged, but look at this. Just look at that. Rapid Air Works, the Oven, HM1000 Micro Hunter. Rubber butt pad here, and there is a push button here that allows you to extend for uh, additional length of pull. Yeah, it looks like it has like three or four stops in it. You have a thumb wheel here. I guess you don't have to use your thumb, but that allows you to raise this adjustable cheek piece. And that gives you a pretty good, uh, pretty good amount of adjustment there. This looks like a pretty standard castle nut wrench. Um, so I'm guessing if you wanted to put a different, um, different buttstock on there. I think you could, but I'm not sure why. And there is a Allen key there. So I'm guessing you can back that out and uh, even get more range of motion out of there. But I, uh, I haven't checked that out quite yet. Oh, I see. Okay. So this screw right here sets the tension for this. So if it seemed like I was having a little bit of trouble before I was, because um, that, that was tightened down. It looks like you got three 
notches there. And then when you get the one you want, you tighten that screw down, and then that stays. That is just so, so pointable. Um, all right, let's move forward a little bit. You got side lever cocking, uh, nice and easy. You've got a safety within the trigger guard. And back is going to be safe. And forward is going to be fire. You have your filler foster probe there, or foster fitting there, with a nice cap on it. And you have your air pressure gauge right there. Caution to read the operator's manual before operating. I suppose we could do that. Um, you have a shrouded barrel. Well, there's some cool stuff underneath the shroud. Um, there is an air stripper and some baffles in there, and the air stripper is adjustable, so you can do a little barrel tuning if you want. Um, and then it also has a threaded end cap. Um, that's going to be half UNF, so you can um, put on your favorite moderator if you decide it needs a little extra. Got your cylinder right there. That is a single point sling quick disconnect. Recognize that guy right there. That'd be pretty sweet for walking around. Keep it nice and tight. Be able to come up on target. So we need to get some air. Um, need to get some pellets. Need to get a scope mounted. I'm going to be using this Helix 2-16. to 16. Um, That's going to allow me at some point later, if I want, to put on a night vision model like the PARD, uh, which responds really, really well to a low base magnification. The PARD, um, and that's just the one I happen to have, is a two power. So when you put it on a scope like this, two power and two power, it's gonna be four power. If you start with a six power, all of a sudden you're at 12 power. And sometimes that looks like you're looking down at a toilet paper tube. You just don't get the field of view. So um, I think this is going to be a great, and it's light, and the glass is really clear, and it's got great turrets. Uh, so I think this is going to be a great combo um, between these two. So let me do a little bit of, uh, wait, actually, wait, before I say goodbye for a few minutes. Um, what else do they send you in the package? You got a magazine, comes in its own little box. Um, and then you've got a registration card and operating manual. They send you a full rebuild O-ring kit, which is nice. Um, and they, okay, here we go. Uh, the micro hunter, and I think in talking to Ton Jones, the reason they went with a dovetail is because that's the traditional, uh, HM1000 uh, layout. So they're they're keeping to tradition. Um, and I I, um, I fully respect that. A lot of people use Picatinny rings. Um, and so they send you a set of Picatinny to dovetail adapters. These are little spring-loaded guys that go on the dovetail, and then you can put a set of dovetail rings on there. Um, I have some friends over at Leapers, um, and they sent me a set of their Pro POI Pro POI um, rings. Uh, they're made up in Michigan, which is cool. Um, made from a single block of aluminum, which is great for the accuracy side of things uh, and precision. And they're 30 millimeter in dovetail. I've got two sets actually. I've got a medium set and a high set. I'm gonna see which one allows me to clear the magazine and stay low as low as I can um, on the bore. Because shooting 177, one of the upsides is shoot a little faster, get a flatter trajectory. 
So we'll see how that works out. And when I come back and have everything all magic together, um, I'll let you know which size rings um, I went with to do the 50 millimeter objective on the scope. That's gonna be kind of the limiting factor. If I have to go up to the high, I will, but I'm hopeful I can do the medium. So you're gonna know about this right about now. It turns out the UTG Leapers Pro POI rings, the medium dovetail are perfect for mounting the 50 millimeter element optics helix two to 16. The other part that you have to worry about is clearance for the magazine. So it turns out if you mount it just right so that you clear that little purge guy there, um, it's just perfect. Magazine goes in. I've got exactly what I want in terms of eye relief. I'm able to lower this all the way down so I don't need any up adjustment. And I'm in the third position out, which gives me perfect firing position, exactly where I want to be for a compact shooter like this. And this is the point where box to bench went to box to bench and more. I went outside and started to do some chronograph work. Uh, as you see here, we have a 10 shot string. The first 10 shots I fired out of the gun. Um, there's really nothing to complain about there. You've got a nine inch barrel, so you shouldn't expect in 177 cal huge power numbers. They've got a high of 815, a low of 806, which puts us at an average of 812, and that's with the JSB 10.3 grain pellet. Just as I finished this string, I got the call that our shipment of new moderators at Donnie FL came in. And that pretty much sidetracked what I had planned for the day. I got two five shot groups out after I zeroed the rifle. Um, they were pretty similar in size. I'll put one of them up here. These are 25 yard, or this is a 25 yard group. And while, you know, you look at the 1.3 roughly MOA, the group itself is, you know, 0.3 inches, which is a really small group. And that's, I think that was actually the second group I shot. Um, once we had the Ryus in, uh, there was an opportunity to use this rifle to do some testing with that Ryu. And while the Micro Hunter shoots really great out of the box and, um, and performed well with the first moderator I put on, which was a Tatsu, um, I had some work to do in terms of testing the new Ryus and seeing, well, and producing a video of how to tune with a modular moderator. Um, so I'm going to link to that video um, right here, so you'll see that link. Um, but out of that group, um, and this was using the Ryu with two baffle segments, um, I got some outstanding groups at 30 yards. And then I stretched it out to 50 um, and right over a quarter inch, so 0.271 um, at 50 yards. Remember, this is a 177. I mean, just outstanding shooting with the Ryu. So you may want to check out that, that video um, because as soon as I was done with that work, it was time to get ready to head to the Pyramid Air Cup. Um, and I had entered into the field target competition with uh, the intent of using a different rifle, but I thought this was shooting so well, um, it, it deserved the opportunity to make the trip. Plus, 
it's so compact it didn't take up a ton of room in the car. So off to the Pyramid Air Cup I went. Um, had a great time there. If you've never been to a competition, especially if you live in the Midwest, put the Pyramid Air Cup on your calendar for next year. Um, they do an outstanding job. The host of the event, if you will, Tyler Patner, um, is a friend of mine and uh, actually paired me up for field target with uh, Bill Rabbit, who I know and have shot with, and I was actually really looking forward to spending the afternoon with him. <laughs> and then when I got there, I found out Rossi Morreale from American Air Gunner was also in our group. So uh, we went out to, to have a really good time. If you're not familiar with Field Target, it's kind of like golf in that you go out on the course and there's lanes and you play lane by lane by lane. Um, you take two shots at each of two targets on the course and depending on what division you're in there are some restrictions and in the case of what I was shooting you had to use your scope as your rangefinder and you couldn't dial your turrets so you had to do holdovers uh, for every uh, different shooting situation and you're talking about relatively small kill zones now Bill Rabbit is an amazing field target shooter um, and a great tour guide for what was for me uh, my first field target experience but he was knocking them down left and right and and, and I, I was not as good though I did uh, I did manage to hit a, a lane or two A few lanes into the course, I started having some accuracy issues, and um, I wasn't exactly certain what was going on until I noticed that the entire shroud had come loose. And um, as a result, I just removed the shroud and shot it with the naked barrel, which I think might have... Uh, defiled the normal peace and quiet of the field target course. Um, I certainly got, got some looks, but, you know, match director said keep shooting, so I kept shooting. And then after the course was over, I went over to talk with um, John and Yvette and Ton from Air Force. And uh, John, the owner of Air Force, who's intimately involved in the development and, and testing and production of their rifles, uh, took a look at it, and we quickly discovered that there are some set screws that hold the collar that the shroud itself screws into, and those had come loose. Um, so we took it apart, put it back together, um, and the gun absolutely snapped back to zero, and everything was good uh, moving forward. It was one of those situations where, of course, you never you never want to have a problem with a rifle. But as somebody who wants to learn about this gun, um, it was a good opportunity for me to, one, have a better understanding of how it's constructed uh, so I can take care of problems in the field and, most importantly, report this to you folks. Um, but also interesting to see... Um, that the manufacturers, in this case, uh, Rapid Airworks, really actually does um, care about these things uh, enough that they stayed at the facility late enough to help me with the problem, um, but also immediately contacted the production line to make sure that in the future these set screws are Loctited in place which was apparently something they hadn't um, felt was necessary up to this point. So moving forward, uh, all these rifles, you shouldn't experience what I experienced. Um, and it is an easy fix. If it, if it happens, you just have to un unscrew um, that cap and then put it back in place 
if it isn't Loctited, put some Loctite in there. I would use blue Loctite, and then you can re-thread the shroud back on. Um, fairly easy as long as you have the right, right tools to get it done. Um, I also had a conversation with them about the cocking on the raw series of rifles and learned something that I did not know. It's pretty typical on an air rifle that you either have a probe o-ring or series of o-rings or a breech o-ring or series of o-rings. On the raw rifles they actually seat and match metal on metal in their um, in their actions. So when a rifle is put together that barrel and breech and probe are married together um, and it's actually more like a friction fit as opposed to an o-ring seal so the cocking on the rifle where normally when you seat it there's kind of a, a cam so it like pushes forward and then there's a let off and it stays in place um, the the raw rifles the design actually is putting that probe directly into the breech and it's sealing uh, metal on metal. I just thought it felt weird. I didn't actually realize it was a totally different design uh, from other air rifles I've worked with. So really great to um, have the opportunity to talk to the folks right from the factory and um, learn things about this new rifle that I wouldn't have known had it performed perfectly um, in this field target course. So maybe I'm just trying to make uh, lemonade out of lemons, uh, but I thought you might benefit from some of this knowledge that I've gained the hard way. My performance on the field target course was not stellar on that first day, and there was another round the next morning uh, but unfortunately for me, business got in the way of me being able to return for a second day. And possibly because Bill Rabbit didn't have to hold my hand throughout the entire uh, course uh, or, you know, listen to me wanting to talk while everybody else was <laughs> kind of being quiet. Uh, he actually managed to run the entire course. And by run the course, what I mean is he shot every stage all four shots at every stage without missing a single target. He ran the course. Um, and combined with his excellent score on day one, despite the handicap of me being along for the ride, uh, Bill actually took the match. Uh, so congratulations to Bill Rabbit. Um, now I had shot the previous day with Bill in the speed um, course. I took second in speed. Uh, Bill was the one who beat me, so couldn't be happier. He's a great guy and an awesome shooter. Not long after I got back from Ohio, the opportunity presented itself to go down on a Sunday afternoon and do some iguana hunting with Orion, the iguana hunter. Uh, if you're not familiar with his channel, definitely check it out. Uh, but we were able to go out and one of the guns I wanted to take out because I have really wanted to prove this to some people that the 177 caliber is still relevant and still capable of getting the job done, even on some pretty tough pests. The trick with iguanas is that they have a very small kill zone. Um, you really have to kind of destroy the brain in order to put them down. I've seen people shoot them in the body over and over and over again with very powerful air guns to what seems like no effect. Um, and of course, that's not what we want as pest controllers. We want that quick and humane kill. Um, and it's been my contention that the 177 caliber is absolutely capable of doing that. So here's a little bit from that hunt. So we're gonna do uh, recovery. Uh, these are two iguanas shot with the uh, raw HM 1000X. This is in 177 caliber. So for anybody who thinks 177 is dead, 
these shots were at like 30, 35 yards. Yeah. We're gonna go make some recoveries. Uh, nice one. That was the first one. And that's the second one. Unfortunately, and this was totally operator error, I double pressed the start the video button, but I don't have footage of the first iguana going down. But the second iguana, and it was two right in a row, two big ones in this one particular area along a lake, you can really see both the precision and the effectiveness of the 177 cal micro hunter um, using the 10.3 grain JSB. So uh, just take a look at this shot. Go. All right, by my calculations, I still owe you guys a trigger pull test. So let me slide this in here. Got the uh, gauge all ready to go. Five point eight ounces. Six ounces. Five point five ounces, and I really don't uh, don't need the calculator to give me an average. Five point eight ounces. Um, this trigger is amazing. Raw definitely lives up to its reputation on this. All you've got, I'll try and show it to you from this side, is a little bit of travel. A nice clean wall and just a little bit through and she's ready to go it's a very very nice trigger if you've never had an opportunity to fire one uh, definitely recommend you getting your hands on one and giving it a pull well everybody uh, this is officially the longest I've ever driven for an air gun review um, since I started with this rifle a couple weeks ago I've put on pretty close to 2,500 miles to uh, bring you the what's what on the Rapid Air Works Micro Hunter. Mine is in 177 caliber. And I guess we're here uh, at the end. Certainly not the last I'm going to shoot of this gun. Um, I have found it to really be an excellent air rifle, um, and I'm excited to have it as part of the permanent collection. Um, I guess a couple of things I want to talk about here at the end. Um, was just in with Mark Keith, one of our uh, one of our guys in the shop, and uh, I said, "Hey, man, you want to take a look?" It was it was fun to watch him pull it up, put it on target, and squeeze the trigger. He was impressed not just by the lightness and crispness of the trigger, um, but by the solid build quality of the rifle. And, uh, you know, they've really, they've really put something together that has that top shelf fit and finish. Um, so, uh, likes, this thing has definite stars in the accuracy department. Um, it will, out to at least 50, 60 yards, it will hit what you shoot at. There is no doubt about it, any miss is on you whether that's due to bad trigger control your own instability parallax error whatever um, the rifle is doing its job and if you're missing at those distances you either have bad dope or you're doing something wrong um, it shoots great out of the box 
and it isn't loud with the included shroud. You can bring the noise down with the right moderator, and what I found uh, was it likes them short. I had good luck with the Tatsu, and I had good luck with the Ryu using one and two segments. It didn't like it with three full segments on there. So uh, maybe something to pay attention to. Um, you also have within the shroud itself the ability to do some harmonic tuning by using um, their uh, integrated adjustable bark stripper, I think is what they're calling it. So that's in the shroud to play with. Um, I did do some adjusting at one point with mine, um, but I wanted to use the moderator and I found when using a moderator, it was um, most accurate in the fully forward position. So that's where I've, I've left it. Just kind of recap what you get with this thing. You've got an adjustable buttstock that adjusts in just about every way you could want it to. You've got uh, swivel sling studs. It's on a standard uh, style buffer tube, so I'm certain you could replace it with whatever really you wanted. Um, you do need to make sure this castle nut is tight. Um, and if you tighten that, but then feel there's just a little bit of wobble in there, down in this hole right here, there is an Allen bolt that connects this buffer tube adapter to the action. Um, and it is possible for that to come loose. Uh, mine came loose just a little bit, but it was easy. Allen key in, give it a little snug, and it is rock solid. The grip is uh, AR style, and you can put whatever you want on there. Um, the trigger is superb. You guys have now seen the trigger pull test. Um, and not only is it light, but it really has a great, great feel. You've got loads of places to put accessory rails. Every one of these cutouts, um, you can put whatever you want in there. So I've got a little Picatinny rail and then um, my Spartan Javelin bipod uh, quick disconnect receiver is right there. Uh, it fills by way of a foster fitting um, and it does get an impressive number of shots. When I was out uh, shooting the field target course, um, which was 40 shots, I never regassed it. I had a whole tank with me, but I never regassed it. Um, and when I was out shooting iguanas, um, I never needed to put any air in it. And I didn't have uh, a ton of time to take lots of shots with it. Um, but I would say, I, I think their website says 60 shots, and, and I can believe that from a full, a full fill. A note on the magazines. Um, if you're ordering magazines from Raw or whatever your favorite retailer happens to be, um, know that these magazines do come in right hand and left hand sides. So this is something I found when I was doing the field target course. I wanted a big parallax wheel to help with my range finding. What that meant was when I put the wheel on, the magazine would no longer fit. Uh, I was really working hard and working fast to try and get this set up. And then I found out, talking to the folks at Air Force Raw, um, that they're left and right-handed magazines. They actually sell them. So they were able to get me a right-handed magazine. Now I could put this in, no problem with the parallax wheel. But for those of you who might think about raw rifles for competition shooting, particularly speed shooting or PRS, because they make left and right, what that means is you can do faster reloads because all you have to do is open the bolt, let's say you have a left-handed magazine in, open the bolt, grab a right-handed magazine, push it straight across, it's gonna push out the old magazine for you and you're back in business shooting your speed competition. So just something to know about the raw um, HM series magazines. There's really only two things that I can say that would even go anywhere near the negative category uh, on the Micro Hunter. Um, one was an assembly issue, which happens. Um, and I think they've got that fixed. Moving forward, putting Loctite on the two screws that go under the shroud 
uh, on the collar that holds everything tight to the barrel. So that's not something that you should have, but if it does happen, it's an easy fix. Um, the other one was this uh, screw that's down in here, being just a little bit loose, um, super easy fix. And other than those two things, boy, right out of the box, super accurate air rifle, just a pleasure to shoot. Um, I think RAW has a definite winner on their hands with the Micro Hunter. Um, if you have any questions, um, and rest assured I will be uh, back to do more with the Micro Hunter, but if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments. I'll be sure to get to you just as soon as I can. Um, I do appreciate the questions. Um, it tells YouTube that there are people interested in the content and you know maybe someday that helps us out. But until the next video, everybody, shoot safe, shoot straight, and we'll see you around.